this stage the senior director of digital transformation policy at digital europe which is as i'm sure you're aware the leading digital Tran technology industry association representing some 45,000 digital companies right across europe so they have a great voice on this so ladies and gentlemen to give us a snapshot of this area please welcome to the stage ray pinto Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for uh, leaving the sun and food and ice cream to hear me. Uh, I've been listening to all the speeches today. And I have to say one that really stood out was the CEO of PPC, because he went into a lot of detail of how they were going to use digital technologies. What did I hear? I heard that he's preparing his company here in Greece to be able to bring renewables onto that grid, to get that flexibility, to make resilience, to make security, to prepare for what eventually may be cyber attacks, and drive down costs and make sure blackouts don't hit his, his country, and many other things that digital does. You're going to hear in the next panel in far more detail the benefits of digital. I'm not going to touch upon it too much here. But I wanted to highlight uh, primarily what you can see in regards to that journey in your transformation. There's one person over there who said that digital transformation is already here for the energy sector. Uh, there he is. And uh, I think it still has a way to go. But those companies that do take on that transformation will do it uh, very quickly uh, if they can uh, implement that and they'll derive some benefits very quickly as well, because it will lead to high levels of efficiency. So, but before I begin, who is Digital Europe? So, as uh, was highlighted, we cover a lot of corporate members. We have national trade associations in all the member states. Um, we very happy to be on stage, and I want to thank your electric for inviting us uh, to be here. My director general apologizes that she couldn't be here herself, and I hope I'm a good stand-in. But you can see from our membership, we go beyond just digital companies. If you look at that logo cloud, you will see that we have banks, we have pharmaceuticals, we have medtech companies, we have transport companies like Airbus and BMW. Why are they members of us? Well, because they have realized over the course of the past seven years that they too are digital companies. And they will be affected by a wide range of new digital policies that are coming into enforcement over the next couple of years. They've all been published. Uh, you will not feel it now, but you will feel it, trust me, in the next couple of years. So, We've already talked about this and our membership size and the different vertical areas uh, that we represent. Here is just a, a site as to you know, what you can expect to see, the tsunami of digital regulation. Uh, I'd love to say that uh, it is forever done and there'll never be more regulation that will be coming down the line. I highly doubt that uh, because we have noticed that there's a lot of politics that have taken over in creating a lot of these different regula regulations. I'm not saying that we don't need the regulations, we do, but it has to be done in a way that can ensure we have the innovation that is driving here in Europe, we have the startups that are creating you know, valuable different innovation technologies, we have companies that want to stay here in Europe. Now, I am not sure when I look at this map, and I was asked by the press just right before this, if I was confident that companies can grow and thrive here. I'm cautiously optimistic, but there is going to be now an effort on a very massive scale over the next couple of years on the implementation of these different areas. And we have some new areas 
that are coming up with the next commission. For example, the GDPR has to be reviewed. Now, will it be a very focused review, or will politics again drive it to be a massive reopening of the GDPR? I definitely hope it's the former, um, and I really hope that we can focus on implementation. But some areas to call out is we have the AI Act, which again was a regulation that probably went a bit too far in the compliance and the scope that it's covering. Uh, what was supposed to be a look at high-risk classification became more general purpose with a far broader scope, which means that many, many companies, especially the small ones in Europe, will have to comply upwards to possibly 300,000 euros just to meet what this uh, new regulation will require. That was from that number, if anyone's wondering, was from the impact assessment from the European Commission itself when it first started out on the original draft. The draft that has gone through Parliament and Council is far more burdensome, and I imagine that number is probably getting closer to half a million that each SME is going to have to comply to. Many of these different regulations, like the Cyber Resilience Act, is not harmonized, even though, oddly enough, these regulations, their sole purpose is for harmonization. What are we going to see? We're going to see member states are implementing it differently. They'll have the leeway to do so. And they'll have their own different rules and reporting requirements and compliance requirements. Each one of these is going to do that. So it's going to be a challenging road ahead for many of you who want to embrace these digital technologies. So it's important that you watch these very closely because it will affect your company. I know you're big state uh, corporations and you work very closely with the government, but many of these EU rules will impact you in some shape or form. I don't want to finish on a negative note because I already see a lot of people looking very sad and they're like, oh, I wish I was outside having that ice cream. So I want to leave you a little bit on something that's a little bit uh, more upbeat. Europe, right, and this is one thing I want you to remember, Europe is not behind globally in the energy ecosystem. Europe actually is doing extremely well when it comes to business and business technologies and adoption, right? When we think about uh, business to consumer, yes, Europe fell behind. But when you think about business to business technologies and, uh, and the size of the market, well, guess what? The EU is way ahead of the game. If it's in pharmaceuticals, if it's in transport, if it's in automotive, if it's in manufacturing, right? If it's in energy. So this is really our race to lose, right? And if you look at the market size, business to consumer is roughly a three trillion market size. For business to business, it's over 13 trillion. Why do we focus so much energy on the politics for consumer technologies? Well, because it's sexier. But we need to shift that dialogue, we need to make sure the officials are looking at the business-to-business -business spaces, harmonizing those standards, the certification, the cybersecurity requirements, and making sure that Europe is working together. We've heard that again and again. It's working together as a union. There is no digital single market. Far too many uh, bits of fragmentation and members wanting to do it on their own. But we did see in the COVID that many of the member states came together. They did, and they worked together. We need to have that same uh, you know, enthusiasm as well. When we look at these technologies, these are transforma transformatable technologies, right, that are going to change the sector that you operate in on the customers that engage with you, on the stakeholders across your supply system, right? You're looking at cloud, and it's hard to incorporate cloud because you're saying, well, that's not CapEx. But cloud is the ability to store all that data and to create massive innovation, train foundational AI algorithms, right, and make sure that you're driving innovation from your ecosystems, reducing cost, 
and making sure services to your customer is top notch. There are all these other different areas that are Europe is now looking and identified as growth areas and key technologies that they must invest in. Technologies that will also protect the grid and your businesses from any attacks that are unfortunately increasingly happening day by day. These are all different areas that our trade association is focused on. We are going to be having a series of dialogues with executives. We're going to be inviting the energy players. I definitely want Euroelectric to walk side by side with us as we you know, look at these different areas. And I just want to leave this slide. I have three minutes. I'm going to finish earlier. But I want to just you to have a look at this. These are all different areas that can be the drivers for this transformation. And it's a lot of very technical, difficult areas. We need proper data cooperation. Even though we have the Data Act, we're very far from that. We need data flow internationally. Again, a huge, difficult thing to overcome and requires a lot of investment in international fora like G7 um, and you know, the B20 and all these other areas. Uh, we need skills. We need to make sure that we have the right regulation. We need to make sure there is the incentives for investment, right? And we need connectivity. And we have to make sure we put our officials to task with KPIs. We have our paper uh, that we've produced with very, very clear KPIs, what we want to see as an industry by 2030. I encourage you to have a look at that. And I definitely want to wish you all a uh, great afternoon and the next couple of days and having these discussions. But tell your officials, Think digital, make sure digital is central to the work that they're doing, and you know, realize that the benefits are there if we embrace them. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ray. Thanks very much. Thank you.